Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today. I woke up this morning and my first thought in my head was, how do I lose subscribers? And then I went, aha, a Fallout tier list. Giving my opinion on this franchise is the only surefire way to do that. I'm kidding. Please stay, by the way. Anyway, as you could see, we're doing a tier list. All the Fallout games, all the DLC, they are about to be ranked in one definitive list because my list trumps all. I'm once again, jokes. Haha, <laughs> funny. Seriously, though. It's just my opinion. At the end of the day, please don't get overly worked up. These are video games. They are fun. We all share passion for the Fallout franchise in some way, shape, or form, I imagine, if you're watching this. So, ladies and gentlemen, with that, we have below every single Fallout game, every piece of DLC. We are going to start with the base games and then expands. See? Get it? Thematic? Ha, huh, cool. Anyway, to the DLC afterwards. So, the first one on our list... Fallout Tactics, a real middle-of-the-road Fallout game for me, and what's middle-of-the-road on our tier list? That's C, yes. Uh, Fallout Tactics, squad-based combat, isometric-style gameplay like we saw in Fallout 1 and 2, but Tactics just did not gel with me. Um, I did not like navigating the levels and trying to manage a whole team. I really like the solo experience like many of us do when it comes to Fallout. Uh, I found Tactics quite forgettable. I don't even think Tactics is fully canon. I believe, if I recall from the Fallout 4 speculation days, Tactics is semi-canon, which is also a little bit interesting and I think says a lot about the game. But this is one that I always felt was best left forgotten, not because it's bad, it's just very middle of the road for me personally. Now, speaking of middle of the road, our next Fallout game is one that... People really, um, really have thoughts about it. And I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I'm playing. All right, look, let's see. <laughs> I wonder how many people were like, oh, and they went right to their keyboard. Yeah, Fallout Brotherhood of Steel is a overhead, beat em up, kind of Diablo style almost Fallout game. I love this game, right? I think this game is awesome. And I would put it at a higher rank, but as a Fallout fan, and as someone who enjoys Fallout games for a very specific reason, Brotherhood of Steel does none of that. But I very much am a sucker for like Champions of Norrath, Champions Return to Arms. These are games that resonate with me in my childhood. Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. And this is pretty much a Fallout game structured just like that. And I thought that was extremely cool. This was another game I played on the channel. I'm pretty sure I've played every Fallout game on the channel at this point in time, which is actually neat. A little mad, little mad fun fact there, but Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, I recommend people give it a shot. Like, it's not your traditional Fallout role-playing experience, so historically speaking, Fallout Brotherhood of Steel is really cool, but if this were to be like a new Fallout game in 2021 and it was like an overhead beat-em-up, I would be fuming. But history-wise and the way the game is and stuff, I dig this game. I actually own a, a complete in box. A viewer sent it to me in 2015 as a little gift, and I've I've always had it, man. I, I thought this game was great. Uh, sadly, it doesn't work with backwards compatibility because who cares about this game, right? Well, just me, it seems. Anyway, uh, next on our list here of mainline Fallout games, we've got Fallout 2, all right? Now, Fallout 2 is uh, one of the original Fallout games, uh, isometric style RPG and this man, I love Fallout 2 so much. Fallout 2 is one of the best role-playing games out there. Uh, I know some people are not a huge fan of Fallout 2 because it's very goofy. It breaks the fourth wall constantly. It's absolutely ridiculous sometimes. New Reino, though, is one of the most memorable experiences I've had in games in the last five years. I played Fallout 2 for the first time five years ago. And while the combat in Fallout, as we've kind of started to realize, at least up until Fallout 4, was never really a superstar, uh, Fallout 2, just in its storytelling, in its lore, its music, especially Modoc. Oh my god, Modoc is one of my favorite tracks of all time. I love that town. Uh, the, the hilarious moments like where the, uh, the, the, the Enclave soldier calls you over the phone and just like rips you a new one. And then if you keep antagonizing him, he'll show up to your doorstep and with a bunch of soldiers and they'll kill you. Like the amount of end states in this game blows my mind it is just so old-fashioned in many ways you can get like stuck and in, in a in a save file where if you like die at the wrong time and you've saved at the wrong time you have to like start the game over so like it's got all that ugliness to it but fallout 2 is such a great role-playing game and it's so fun to replay and see how things unfold and like i said man new reino 
Nureno is absolutely incredible. I adore Nureno. I, I cannot speak highly enough of Fallout 2. Uh, one of my favorite role-playing games. Uh, I'm so happy that my audience really pushed me to give this game a chance because I was very close-minded on the old school Fallout games and I would suggest to those of you who have not tried them out, open your mind, try to get past some of the isometric gameplay. And if you can do that and enjoy some really good writing, some hilarious moments, some amazing choices, uh, it, it would even put Fallout New Vegas to shame. <laughs> All right, next here on our tier list, we've got Fallout 4. Oh boy, oh boy, Mr. Near Perfect ranking Fallout 4 on his tier list. <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to put Fallout 4 at B. It's not A because it's not like super good. Uh, Fallout 4 is an inconsistent experience, but it's good, right? Like as I've aged and I think uh, come down to earth as a critic, uh, Fallout 4 is a good game and I will always say that. I, I don't care about the whole, it's a good game, not a good Fallout game. I think in many ways Fallout 4 is a good Fallout game. I think like the, the synth storyline and and the the uh, atmosphere that creates the the societal tension that creates works very well in fallout 4 i think the uh commonwealth is one of the more interesting wastelands we've had the opportunity to fully explore uh, i think the amount of secret areas that are tucked away into the commonwealth the unmarked locations is really more than we've seen in any previous bgs game and i always appreciated that because of all the environmental storytelling they have it really brings the world to life like i mentioned earlier Gameplay, never been the superstar of Fallout, but I appreciate that Fallout 4 plays as a solid first-person shooter, something that other entries of the game really fail to do so. Is that why we all play Fallout? No, of course not. But it doesn't hurt that knowing now and hopefully future entries in the single-player aspect after 76 that Fallout 4, or I'm sorry, Fallout games should play a lot better, feel a lot better as they smooth out those mechanics. So I really appreciate that, but I also do kind of miss which is why it's in the B section, uh, the, the skill-driven shooting, right? Where like you could have something like New Vegas where you could aim down sights. It would affect your accuracy. You could still play it like a first-person shooter, but your skills would make you better with certain weapons. So I felt that was a really good hybrid there. But Fallout 4 tells a good story. Maybe it doesn't have the most choice and consequence of any Fallout game. Uh, it certainly has a lot of memes like uh, I have a new settlement that you have to go take home. Whatever the hell it is, man. I, I've heard it so many times I've borderline forgot about it. <laughs> but Preston Garvey exists. Uh, there's tons of things that are wrong with Fallout 4. But I would say as a Fallout game, I enjoy it still to this day. I just replayed it this year. I got the platinum trophy for it. And uh, I had a good time doing that. It was fun to return to it. And I appreciate a lot of things about it. All right. What do we got next here? Got that one out of the way. Whew, anxiety. <laughs> Fallout 76! Oh, dear. All right, so as you can see by the little image we've got here, I picked Wastelanders. I think it's only fair, given that Fallout 76 is a recurrent Fallout game, that, um, you know, we, we rank it based off its most recent large update. I know it's got, like, a score system in there, but the last time I played 76 was back in, I want to say, like, May or June or whatever, when uh, Wastelanders was already out, and they were adding a couple new bits of content to it. I have not played it since, so I'm rating it based off what I've experienced up to Wastelanders. Now, if this was the launch game, it would find itself right here, right? Like, Fallout 76, when I ranked it on my RPG tier list, found itself in the F category, because it is not a role-playing game in many ways. With Wastelanders, it kind of bumps itself up a little bit, but Fallout 76 to me is D. As a Fallout game, I know some would say, put that stinking thing in the F. Uh, the reason I have it in D is because Fallout does not work online. It does not work as an online game. It will never work as an online game. And Wastelanders only serve to highlight that. Wastelanders is fun. It's great, in fact, in a lot of ways. But it just showed how limiting the online environment is. It, it's kind of like what I said with Genshin Impact, where it has its PS4 version, its PC version, and the way it's like an open world is structured. It welcomes you in. But you don't realize, oh, there's a phone version. So inherently, everything will be limited to that phone version, right? If it can't squeeze onto the phone version, arguably its biggest player base, they're not going to put it onto just the PS4 and PC. Otherwise, it creates an imbalance and you might push away some of your player base. And at the end of the day, they, they are going to operate as a business. Same thing goes with 76. As you implement all these features like Wastelanders, it tries so hard to be a single player game. And there are some really good moments in the story, but it's still online. 
So everything they do is subject to online play. And they've tried to work around it with like instance dungeons. So it's just you in there and it starts to feel more like a traditional Fallout experience, but it's not quite doing like what Elder Scrolls Online did, where it sort of bridged that gap, where it does feel like a MMO, but there are a lot of moments that make you feel like you're at the center of the story. And that game just kept getting better and better and better. 76 is really lagging behind on that and more so doubling down on its online elements. If you enjoy that, that's perfect. That's great, man. 76 is, is great for you then. Uh, for me though, as a, a fan who, who kept up with the game, once Wastelanders came and then they went ahead and started doing more online things and not focusing on like questing NPCs, that's when I was like, all right, whatever, I'm moving on. I know they're adding a Brotherhood of Steel update or it might already even be out at this point in time. And I understand that's a, a big deal for a lot of people. I will be checking that out. But when it comes to like their, their battle pass system they implemented and stuff, it's like, I'm good, dude. Really, I'm fine. Next on the list, Fallout 1. Oh, yeah. Fallout 1. Um, So, I am not the biggest fan of Fallout 1. Uh, and, and I don't want to put it in A tier. That's almost too much praise. And the way I feel about it, I admire what it did, but... I'm putting it in the B tier. Now, does this mean that I view Fallout 4 equally to Fallout 1? This is the only crappy part about tier lists, in my opinion. No. No, I do not. Okay? But in the terms of how much I enjoy Fallout, I played Fallout 1 once. I have never had a desire to go back to it. I don't like the time system where you're running around trying to find the, the, the water chip, I think it is, uh, for your vault. I don't like that feeling of being on the time limit. I, I love to take my time and explore and converse and see everything in a Fallout game. I know some people do appreciate Fallout 1 for its time limit because it does make you feel like there is an actual pressure, an actual uh, sense of urgency to the story and that people's lives are on the line. And I totally understand that, right? Like that is a really cool mechanic. I know people like that, for example, in Majora's Mask. And uh, I think even Final Fantasy 13 Lightning Returns tinkers a little bit with like that, that time limit mechanic. A lot of people like it, Dead Rising as well. I don't vibe well with that. I am someone who really takes their time. I am such a slow poke with games because I really like to take everything in. Uh, it lets me just analyze it all, enjoy it all. Uh, and, and not feel that pressure. And so I don't respond well to that pressure. There are times, like I said, Fallout 1 was cool uh, to, to play once, but to go back to it, it didn't vibe me well. Combine that, once again, the isometric gameplay. Uh, while I, I enjoy it, I can play games like, say, Divinity, which is an isometric RPG that is modern. Uh, I don't mind those games. They are definitely not my preference. Um, it's more so about in those isometric experiences, even like Wasteland 3. It, it's about the, uh, the choices you can make, the amount of stories you can experience, not that Fallout is lacking in that, but just Fallout 1 uh, didn't resonate with me as strongly as, say, Fallout 2. I felt Fallout 2 was a drastic improvement in every way, shape, and form. It was bigger. It removed that time limit. Uh, it was a lot more funny. Uh, it, it still had that dark humor, though, in it. There was just so many crazy moments. So <clears throat> I guess what really happened was I liked Fallout 1. It probably would have been in the A tier, but then I played Fallout 2, and I'm like, that was so much better, and it sort of lowered my opinion of Fallout 1 in a sense once again i need to emphasize it does not mean that fallout 4 is as good as fallout 1 but i know i'm sure someone out there will still take that out of context and try to make me look foolish because it is the internet uh with that ladies and gentlemen we move on to everyone's favorite fallout new vegas is absolutely s tier and i don't even know if i have to explain myself for this part but for the sake of the video i absolutely will fallout new vegas is a incredibly strong game it is one of the best rpgs of the last decade um, the amount of choice and consequence, ways to replay this game, the ways that you can build your character, the amount of secrets that you can uncover. It is a perfect hybrid of everything in Fallout. It has great atmosphere, great characters, uh, great storytelling. Although I'm not as in love with the whole Hoover Dam story uh, over time, it's not as like, compelling or interesting to me. It's more so about the choices you can make. And that's what Fallout's about in a lot of ways, but New Vegas especially. New Vegas to me is a choice game. Like, I don't really care. I was never personally invested in the Hoover Dam, right? I was more invested in the factions that were invested in Hoover Dam. So the NCR, Legion, um, and so on and so forth. I was interested in those and their reasoning rather than the actual narrative purpose, which was, you know, the Hoover Dam and the future of New Vegas itself. But still, uh, New Vegas, of course, slacks in like one department, like Mr. New Vegas on the radio and stuff. So there's not as many lines. It's not as charismatic as, say, Three Dog. But it more than makes up for it with its excellent companions, of course, the amazing companion quests, 
Um, I just love going back into New Vegas and replaying it, right? Like Fallout 3, I replay a lot for its atmosphere, but a lot of my point A to point B, my questing, it all ends up the same, right? With New Vegas, you do go back and there's a sense of something ends up being a little bit different. You end up discovering something new. And that is always such an incredibly cool feeling when you go back to a game, right? That like it feels bigger and more broad than you would last remembered. That does happen a lot to me with Fallout 3 at times, but not nearly as much as New Vegas. Speaking of Fallout 3, this S tier, it's getting a little crowded. Uh, I am one of the people who does like Fallout 3 more than Fallout New Vegas. Uh, it's just personal preference, I think. They, they both do things extremely well. I do value choice and consequence so much, but Fallout 3's atmosphere is top notch. I really can't think of a video game that has the atmosphere of Fallout 3. A, a viewer made a really good point during one of my live streams where they brought up the fact that if you have the radio off in Fallout 3, it has a more oppressive, heavy uh, atmosphere compared to when the radio's on and you're like jumping around, having a good time. Like it's totally uh, in sync either way. Combine that with it being the first of its kind, right? Like Bethesda did break out the Fallout franchise. They they brought it from isometric to a first person open world setting. And I respect people who say like Fallout 2 is better than 3. It makes sense. Like Fallout 2 does so much right. It's kind of the beauty of the Fallout franchise. If you've noticed with each of these games that I've ranked B or up, I've had something really good to say that the others really didn't do, right? Fallout 1, time limit. Fallout 4, shooting. Fallout 2, goofiness and sense of choice fourth wall breaking fallout new vegas perfect hybrid fallout 3 it's atmosphere they all do something incredibly well which is why i can't stand when like the fallout community attacks itself and says like you're wrong because of this it's like no like these games are all amazing like they all are amazing and you're really not wrong for ranking them in any way shape or form right for me fallout 3 gels with me more i love its atmosphere its world is absolutely incredible i could explore the capital wasteland constantly man like i just always think of that first trek from megaton to the super duper mart you go back to megaton you get the quest from moyer brown for the wasteland survival guide you start going all over the place on the map and the way it just unfolds in such a natural way i made a whole video about fallout 3 recently so i don't want to repeat myself too much but it is just a truly incredible timeless experience and with that now we move into DLC. So it starts in a very interesting fashion. I included the seasonal updates that have led up to the point I had played Fallout 76, which was Wastelanders uh, in this tier list as well. One of the significant seasons of content was Nuclear Winter. Now, I did make a video talking about how great I thought Nuclear Winter was, but this came at a time where Fallout 76 was missing NPCs. It was really in a weird spot. Everyone was dumping on the game. Full Nuclear Winter is an F. I'm sorry. Like I remember that feeling. Like I, It was such a tone-deaf announcement. You're like, what are you guys doing? I played it. I was like, this is good. It was the first good update, but it's not remotely okay that the first good thing about 76 from its launch was a Battle Royale. I will never accept that. It belongs in the F, even if I enjoyed it. Do you get me? Good. All right. On to Fallout 3 DLC. <coughs> I need water. The Pit. Oh, my gosh. All praise the Pit DLC. Atmosphere is the name of the game for Fallout 3. Like it's, it's choice and consequence. Very, very much good or evil, right? But I feel like the Pit manages to sort of blend them together and and make it feel like you're not winning either way it's a really sad scenario it's such a cool setting though there's a little bit of creepiness in here i also like the environmental layout the level design of the pit felt very different from any of the other dlc and i appreciated some of the the, the dark choices that were present in here so the pit is one of my favorite fallout 3 dlcs it's arguably my fallout fa uh, favorite sorry fallout 3 dlc of them all uh, i feel like some days i wake up and i'm like i like point lookout as my favorite and some days i wake up and the pit's my favorite lately uh for the last i'd say year or two it's really been the pit uh, i really adore what bethesda did with that um, even though it was bite-sized and it was more story driven i thought that the way it, it intelligently expand the fallout universe it felt purposeful it was interesting. I really liked it. Okay, so I talked about Fallout 76 as a whole. Wastelanders, um, I put in here just because it is an expansion. Once again, a season of content. Wastelanders, I'm going to put in the C, right? Fallout 76 as a whole, D. 
Wastelanders was a proper response though, but as I mentioned earlier, without repeating myself, very limited by the online infrastructure. Oh boy, Fallout New Vegas DLC. Oh. I am making a whole video about this at some point in time. Fallout New Vegas' best DLC is dead money. It is absolutely dead money. Name a DLC that makes you play the game differently out of everything on this list. None of them do. Dead money is really good. I understand it's difficult. I know some people don't like that all your stuff gets taken away. But I love the idea of greed and leaving behind all the gold bars. The story of the Sierra Madre is interesting. The way it starts to really connect at this point in time. If you guys remember, as the DLC was uh, coming out, I think it went Honest Hearts and then Dead Money. I know a lot of people didn't like Dead Money, but I went back and replayed it, man, within the last year. Dead Money is the best New Vegas DLC I will stand by that one till the day I die because I think that replaying the game, you're doing all the same things. You're exploring, you're shooting, you're looting, and Dead Money says you're playing this game differently. You're exploring differently. You're starting from scratch in a way for just a temporary uh, period of time, and its end quest reward is thematically synced with the narrative. I love that. I love that about Dead Money. I think it's so good. I praise it endlessly. I think Dead Money is fantastic, and I wish I got on that high train a little bit sooner. Honest Hearts. Honest Hearts, um, I remember I was really late to this one. I only played it for the first time, um, I, I want to say, man, it was multiple years after launch. But uh, Honest Hearts, it's A tier. Fallout New Vegas' DLC is, is pretty unmatched when you when you look at it, right? Like Especially compared to Fallout 3. Uh, New Vegas' DLC is just excellent. Uh, Joshua Graham is obviously the superstar here of Honest Hearts. I found him to be the most interesting part. I really didn't find the, um, the, 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 the world space and the exploration that interesting, the environment, uh, which I think is a big draw for Fallout. I know a lot of people are invested in the lore heavily at that, but for me, it's also about the location you're exploring. And I thought that, that part was very boring, but otherwise Joshua Graham, very interesting character, helped build out that universe a lot more, um, expand factions in the base game. And I think the way it fed off of that was in a way that really helped the game overall. Uh, now we're moving on into Fallout 4 DLC. I love the art for Automatron. So this was the DLC where you were able to create your own robot companions. Uh, it's going to go in the C tier. Um, Automatron, man, I remember like this was the first season of Fallout 4 DLC was so weird. As we're, you can see on the bottom, we're going to get into all of it now. The first season of Fallout 4 DLC was so weird because we were like, give us more quests, expand the, the Commonwealth, or bring us to a new location. And they give us this kind of like four hour quest line where you're building your own robots and not adding humans to the world. It was like a small taste test of 76 now that you look at it. Minus in 76, you're not building the robots, but that's all you interacted with. Same thing started to happen here with Automatron. It was cool to see the community like build really powerful robot companions and like deck out their entire settlement with them. Uh, the settlement mode was like a big focus as we know with Bethesda. Automatron was like an interesting in-betweener of questing and building. Uh, but yeah, Bethesda just did not get the hint, right? So contraptions. I know it's great. You know, people like all of the settlement DLC. Wasteland Workshop. You know, they, they, like I remember that was the most tone deaf thing they did. Wasteland Workshop was not only silly, like no one was asking for $5 DLC of cosmetic stuff to add to your camps or your settlements in Fallout 4, but it also the whole uh, arena thing they let you build came broken. It came completely broken. <laughs> so it's just like, dude. Dude, what are you guys doing, man? Just super frustrating. Contraptions added, like, ammo crafting. Once again, it was, like, coming out right before Nuka World. You're like, God almighty, give us what we want. Now, for vault Tech, I'm going to put this in the D. At least vault Tech had a quest, right? It wasn't just crafting. It had a quest. And, and that's all I'm asking for, man. Bethesda, it took a while for them to get that. Now, more importantly, right? I'm not going to stay here and obviously explain what I think is, is pretty self-explanatory. These two here, though, the big ones for Fallout 4. Far Harbor, Nuka World. Far Harbor is one of the best Fallout DLCs of all time. It is one of my favorites. I think Far Harbor is better than the base game of Fallout 4. That is one time where the tier list connects here, right? Like now I said, doesn't mean that I view these two on equal terms, but 
Fallout 4 is less than Far Harbor as a whole. Because Fallout 4's entire base game, right? It is it is created around the idea of synths that could be posed as humans blending into society and you may not even know the difference and, and your closest friend could be someone who was created in a laboratory and that freaks people out. But it never really hit home. It was a great theme, but it never really hit home with Fallout 4's base game. Far Harbor, however, actually managed to do this. I made multiple videos talking about the story. I think Dima was his name, the main character for Far Harbor that you interacted with a lot that humanized the sense that made you sympathize for them. Furthermore, you had to choose between three factions here and there was actual choice and consequence in Fallout 4. There were skill checks. Far Harbor was exactly a perfect response from Bethesda Game Studios to all the complaints about Fallout 4. I adore Far Harbor. It's sizable. It's got great quests. I always think about the uh, hotel one, the hotel murder robot investigation one, which I, I, I do think Bethesda did take a little bit of inspiration, and I'm, I'm being sarcastic if you couldn't tell, uh, from a mod with that one, uh, which is really sad, but still it was a really strong part of the DLC, so it kind of puts you between a rock and a hard place complimenting it, but you know, that aside, Far Harbor exploring it, loot, story, sympathizing for the synths, it does all of it right. Skill checks. It responds beautifully, I think, to what was wrong with Fallout 4. Nuka World, on the other hand, is a return to form. Nuka World was uh, was more Fallout 4. It was more linear quests. Um, it was it was because like Fallout 4 was all about being the good guy, right? You were constantly shoved into the role of being the good guy, no matter what. And so, Nuka World, everyone's saying, like, I want to be evil in Fallout 4. But Bethesda took it so literally that they said you could, like, almost only be evil in Nuka World. Because you're teaming up with the Raiders. And it's like, no, 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 that's that's not really what we meant. We meant, like, good or evil. Like, present choices that make us go either one side or the other. You know, like in Fallout 3, for example. Like, obviously, the neutral standing choices were always great. But... Nuka World tried to rework the whole settlement system where then you'd eventually raid your own settlements and take them over with raiders. And that was a really cool interaction for the game world, I think, how it brought content from the actual DLC into the base game. Uh, I loved how they connected to the Fallout 3 um, Nuka Cola quest line. Um, I forgot the name of the woman who, who gave that to you in Fallout 3, but I loved how they connected that with Nuka World and you could get like prizes and they changed all the enemy types and it was just very wild very different fun tons of things to unlock uh, it had that absolutely beautiful heartwarming easter egg to a, a fallout fan that had passed away and I, I thought that was an incredible gesture by bethesda as well but ultimately as a uh, a package nuka world i felt was like more of fallout 4 which isn't a bad thing it just wasn't the response that people were expecting with far harbor which did everything right uh, it feels like they were made by two separate teams, um, one that just kept going on with what Fallout 4 was and one that was looking to kind of right the wrongs. Um, and I'm curious to know, I, I would want to look that up if if they were like directed by different teams. That would, that would tell a lot. Okay, dipping back into the Fallout 3, New Vegas, and some 76 DLC here. We've got Broken Steel. Uh, Broken Steel adds on to the main story of Fallout 3. And it is uh, really just there so that we could play the game after launch, right? Like, uh, or not after launch, sorry. After completing uh, the end story. Uh, even if you make a choice to not sacrifice your... Even if you make a choice to not sacrifice yourself in Fallout 3, you still ended up getting sent to the main menu and would have to restart your save file unless you had a earlier save. Really, really frustrated fans. But Broken Steel... I mean, how do you really rank this thing, man? Like, as a story, I didn't really care about it, um, but it added a significant part to the game that let us keep playing with our, our main characters and experiencing the DLC. Um, I go back and forth between C and D. I'm going to go with D, because, like, quite honestly, it just was there to add on the ability to let us continue playing the game. Story-wise, I was not invested. Honestly, I barely remember anything from it. I couldn't tell you much about Broken Steel. Point Lookout, however, let's test here. More Fallout 3 atmosphere. The pit had a different feel, right? And that's what was really cool about it. But Point Lookout felt like a very natural extension of Fallout 3. And plus, like I always remember being at my friend's house one of the first times I played this DLC. And the 
hallucinating you did where you were like following a path of like vault tech bobbleheads and i remember being such an idiot and being like oh my god a luck a luck bobblehead a strength one dude they're all over the place this is amazing and you find out you're hallucinating i'm just like dude damn my character was about to be stacked uh but you know i just think of moments like that um but yeah it's just really a fallout uh three's point lookout dlc felt like more fallout three right which i know sounds a bit hypocritical because i just said nuka world was more fallout four and that was a problem but i like fallout three's base game a lot clearly uh so for me more of that with point lookout was great but not more of it in the sense of more story just a new location more exploration more of that atmosphere uh point lookout and like i said the pit i go back and forth on which one i like more right now i'm a pit guy i'm a pit guy lonesome road Oh, my own. I love, love, love Lonesome Road. I will replay New Vegas sometimes just to experience Lonesome Road. I stayed home from school to play Lonesome Road, and I made videos on it on my old uh, YouTube channel, which no longer has any videos on it except one redirecting you guys to here. Isn't that funny? Um, but yeah, Lonesome Road was a very special DLC uh, for me, I just remember, like I, I just mentioned, those memories there. Uh, not only that, I think the story and the way it all just connects Ulysses, I just, man, like it is, it is such a strong way to wrap up New Vegas. I remember being very sad once it was all said and done, uh, especially the really, really crazy choice you can make at the end of this DLC, right? Like you choose where a nuke goes, <laughs> like, hello? A, a, a more significant way of handling what 76 does where they're like everyone's dropping bombs now i love lonesome road so much man so good uh if you've never played it before and you're watching this whole tier list video just out of sheer intrigue play lonesome road so good mothership zeta i don't i'm sorry actually you know what the aliens caused the Great War. What were they thinking, man? Like, oh my god. I only play Mothership Zeta strictly because I want the alien weapons. And you're just busted for the whole rest of the game. So I go in there as soon as possible. I blaze through it. I don't find the story interesting. There are some good bits of comedy. A lot of its story is delivered through audio logs. Hello? Yeah, I was like, come, come on, man. Come on. This was not good DLC, in my opinion. At first, it was really cool. But what was I love? What I love about Aliens and Fallout, right, is like how New Vegas did it, where you have like the wacky or wild wastelander perk, and you discover them, right? It, it's like a weird Easter egg. It's like a secret thing happening in the universe. Or Fallout 4, where a randomly generated event of a UFO crashing in from the sky, and you can actually track some of the alien blood on the ground to this unknown cave like that was an amazing moment that was just emergent but basing a whole bit of content around it i just i i don't like it it's literally there for me for the loot and plus the enemies are so spongy i just i don't like mothership zeta i'm sorry i'm sorry old world blues however old world blues uh is more fallout new vegas uh, i put it in the s tier strictly because of that i really honestly i would sometimes consider putting in the a tier because going back to old world blues a lot of people forget like you get a half hour of just characters speaking at you and after like the third time going in there it's a it's a little bit of like a shut up and let me play but you can't just skip a full conversation and fall out they don't let you uh so you're just stuck in there as for just old world blues as a whole exploring weapons questing humor it's there it's great Need I say more? I know a lot of you guys always write in the comments that Old World Blues is your favorite. I see it pretty much every day at this point in time. Uh, so I don't know if I really need to over-explain myself. But I'm, I'm not as die-hard in love with it as the rest of these. But I do enjoy New Vegas a lot, of course. So for me, more of that was fine. But I was not, like I said, going back to it. I don't know how many of you have gone back to it recently. But it does feel a little slow in some places. Operation Anchorage. Um... Let's see here. That one, I'm a little... It's not It's not ranked high at all. Um, I'm going to put D. I don't really think Operation Anchorage's story is interesting. Uh, it's, once again, one of those Fallout 3 DLCs. I'm just driven by the loot, right? I'm there for the Chinese stealth armor. That's all I care about, personally. Um, it's not one that when I start up a new playthrough of Fallout 3, I'm thinking Pit. I'm thinking Point Lookout. Uh, I'm not thinking Operation Anchorage. And I'm not certainly thinking of Mothership Zeta. 
And last but certainly not least, Wild Appalachia. Boop! F. Tone Def. Just releasing more supplemental whack robot content in the middle of people telling you they want something else. I understand development takes some time. They gave us like 20 hours of 15 hours, really, a free story, which is great. I appreciate that. That's why Wastelanders is here in the C tier, not down here in the F tier. Uh, but yeah, wait, well, I'm surprised. The, the A tier is surprisingly barren. Interesting. A uh, lot of F, though. A lot of F. So this is my, uh, my complete tier list, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, my hot takes, my, 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 I imagine, common takes like uh, these three right here. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to seeing what you not only think of my tier list, but um, of course, what you would rank in the comments down below. So go ahead, fire away, let me know what's on your mind, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys put together. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'll talk to you guys soon. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. Big thank you to all the patrons and the members as well. Appreciate each and every single one of you guys. And I'll talk to you soon. Stay sexy, stay active. Love you all. Peace.